Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, and I have got a lot of headphones, and I love them too much to give them up, so I need to find a place to put them. Before, I had them over here hanging on my microphone arm, but as you might imagine, all that weight on them, just too much. So, we're going to solve the problem using a little thing I like to call 3D printing. Actually, everybody calls it 3D printing. Yeah, this entire intro is so stupid, I'm just going to leave it in. Hey, what's up guys? So here's the headphone hanger that I finally settled on just because it was really narrow, easy to fasten to the wall, and it fits all of my headphones just fine. But you can find tons of headphone hangers out on sites like Thingiverse and Umagine. Uh, just tons of them. But the link for this particular bracket I'll have in the description if you're interested. But we're going to go ahead and print this out on the Ultimaker V1 because I'm still waiting for a replacement fan that was damaged in shipping on the Ultimaker V2. It should be here early next week. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and print this out. Layer height of 0.2 millimeters. We're going to do a fill density of 100%. Or actually, you know what? We're going to back that off. Let's do a fill density of 50% because I don't need this to be solid plastic for it to be strong enough to support something hanging on the wall like headphones. So no, no use in wasting the material and adding unnecessary weight. We're going to do the print speed to about 100 millimeters a second. The Ultimaker can go a lot faster than this, but since it doesn't have a heated bed and I don't want to risk any warping, we're just going to stick at about 100. 220 uh, C for my printing temperature at the print head for PLA. We're going to print these in white PLA. And my diameter settings all set. Everything else, we're going to leave the same. Actually, I don't need any support material on this one because this print's fine. There's not enough of an overhang to require it. So if we go over here and we slice it into the layers, you can see it's building up right here. This is the tool path being developed in G-Code. And this is what the printer uses to draw everything. And it's really cool because you can actually flip through. You can see it's going to be a total height of 300 layers. And you can see each layer as you scroll down. You can see the infill, which is represented by this gold material in here. And you can see the tool path, which is represented by the blue line. And uh, you can pretty much see exactly how the printer takes this object and turns it into a 3D object. Very, very cool stuff. All right, well, let's get it over on the printer. And I'm going to print out four of these bad boys. Now, as you guys can see here, I'm using the Ultimaker V1 because I'm still waiting for a replacement fan for the Ultimaker V2, which is coming from overseas. Hopefully, it'll be here early next week and we can really start uh, pounding on that machine. So don't let the Ultimaker V1 fool you, though. This, Even though it looks like it was built in a shed, this is a high-precision machine. Out of all the 3D printers I've used, used up until this point, Ultimaker V1 has been phenomenal. The accuracy is great. You can see right here how it's printing a layer at a time. You can see the honeycomb pattern that it's building inside. That's actually created by Cura, which is a software created by Ultimaker, and it's also open source, which I have huge respect for. The 3D printers that I choose, they all have to use G-Code. That's why I don't have MakerBot or anything like that. It's because they all use proprietary software. I like that this uses universal software, and I can literally take the same G-Code and feed it to any of my three printers and produce the model. Now, I'm printing it at an incredibly high speed right now. This is literally 10,000%. Each one of these brackets took about an hour and 8 to 10 minutes to finish. Um, and I'm printing it at a 0.2 millimeter layer height right here. And I'm using plastic that's uh, it's PLA PHA from uh, ColorFab. And I actually get the material from PrintedSolid.com. An excellent source for material, guys. If you're looking for 3D printing material, chances are if it's worth printing in, they carry it. So... Uh, we're just getting close to finishing it up. Now you can see this hook has an overhang at the end and I don't have to use any support material for it. This printer is very, very good with all the settings that I have. It actually doing some pretty insane overhangs without needing any support. But even if I did need support, it's pretty easy to remove with the PLA PHA. And here we're just about done with the print. We can get these things mounted. Voila. All right, guys, so here's the completed brackets. I printed four of them, and I pretty much just put one screw in. You can put two screws in to keep them from moving back and forth, but it wasn't a big problem for me, and I wanted to avoid having to put more holes in the wall than I had to. Um, really, really easy to print. The brackets themselves are incredibly strong. I didn't even print them fully solid. I printed them with 50% infill, and I chose this location more out of laziness because the room is getting really, really full, and I didn't want to move a whole bunch of stuff around, and I wanted to drill them into a stud so that I didn't have to put anchors in the wall. But I am going to play around with the configuration a little later. So let's start with my cheapest headphones and work our way up. These are my Audio-Technica AD700Xs. We'll go ahead and put those right down here at the bottom. Great pair of headphones, a little bit weird. Some people don't like them, but uh, I, I like them a lot, actually. 
Next in line is my favorite gaming headset. This is the Bayer Dynamic MMX 300. And I'm just routing the cords down here um, along the side just because I don't want to have to wrap them and unwrap them every time I want to use a pair of headphones. Now for listening to music that has a lot of bass in it, I use my HE 500s by Hi-Fi Man. These things are phenomenal. Headphones, little on the heavy side, but as long as you're not whipping your head around a whole bunch, they're fantastic. And here we have the crown jewel of the collection. These are Sennheiser HD 800s. And we'll go ahead and stick those right up there on the top where they belong. Phenomenal headphones. Not gonna lie to you, they're not worth the money. They're not worth 1300 bucks. But I'll tell you what, as far as headphones go, they are the best sounding and closest thing to accurate sound reproduction I've ever heard. Um, go watch my review on them. They're a phenomenal set of cans if you can get a deal on them, but I wouldn't buy them brand new. So there you have it guys, before I had all these headphones hanging on my microphone arm and it was weighing it down and it was bending it and I had to find a place to put them. So I figured it would be really cool to have a series of hooks on the walls that were wide enough to hold the band of even the largest headphones and I just have easy access to them and anyone, anytime I want a pair, like if I want the Hi-Fi Mans, all I have to do is pull the cable out the side and there it is. I have them, I'm ready to go. I don't have to pull them out of a drawer, I don't have to unwrap and rewrap the cable each time. I really, really like that convenience of it. Personally, I also like the look of it, guys. A lot of people might not like the look. Um, when I put some pictures up on Instagram, a lot of people were like, oh, I'd put, them in, I'd put them in this place in your room, I'd put them in those places in the room. This was just the easiest place that I had access to that I didn't have a bunch of stuff in the way. The room is getting really, really crazy crowded in here. I've got three 3D printers, all this massive computer equipment, all these boxes over here, the simulator, the quadricopter, all my photography equipment. It's a lot for this little room to handle. So again, this is awesome because you can use the 3D printer to build brackets. This isn't the first brackets I've built to hang stuff. I've built all kinds of stuff for my wife. A lot of it you guys haven't seen. A lot of cable management and stuff and clips. There are a lot of potentials for 3D printing. I get a lot of messages saying that 3D printing is not practical. It's just for printing like little trinkets and stuff for your desk. Yeah, that's all fun. But you can do some real stuff with 3D printing. Cable management, adapters for things to fit one thing into another thing. Um, you can design pretty much anything you want, your own stuff. I even designed my own light cover for the, for the Nerd Cave room that you guys have seen. And uh, it's, it, it's pretty much endless possibilities with these things. And right now, guys, I'm actually working on building brackets for the Boto Revolution Racing Simulator to mount these little guys. They're 100 watt, uh, no, they're sorry, 250 watt max output butt kicker mini LFEs that have been modified by Sim Vibe. Uh, guys to even have more oomph. So I'm going to 3D print those brackets, test fit them, and then send them off to be made out of metal. So 3D printing is awesome, guys, and I love showing you guys the solutions that I come up with. If you haven't seen my other video, I also made controller holders for my Xbox, uh, my OUYA, and uh, what else do I have? Oh, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and OUYA controllers all sit on the side of my nightstand with 3D printed stuff. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a nerdgasm. Just one other application for a 3D printer for you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, oh, and before, <laughs> before I head off, I want to show you guys one of my subscribers made a funny uh, meme about this whole thing. And uh, I'm going to show it to you right now and hopefully you'll laugh as much as I did when I saw it because it's freaking hilarious. Well guys, I'm doing a little bit of multitasking right now because I'm p finishing Barna Vlog number four right now on this camera while filming this video on this camera. And I love doing this overlap stuff. So guys, you probably don't have a lot of context because I wasn't recording the whole time, but I'm making a video right now. But I can let these guys go because I need to get back to the vlog. All right guys, again, hope you had a nerdgasm. Till next time. And that's a wrap. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.